I demonstrated a free electricity machine in Ventura, California in 1988. I did it. I did it publicly. I invited the public to come. I got up on the stage to demonstrate that unit, and the sheriff came in and arrested me right on the stage. Get that green book. Get my book and read it. The whole story's in there. All the evidence that went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, and they did something they've never done in U.S. history in my case. It's all in there. Well, you can know who we are. And I demonstrated it. I was there to demonstrate it. They confiscated it. They said, this is evidence in a trial. Nobody's turning anything on today. And they had six cops there that helped everybody out of the building in order because they thought there would be a riot. Then they took it down, and they said that it didn't work. Uh, a guy who was an expert from Consolidated Edison in California tested it, and he said, Judge, it doesn't work. I was held over for trial. They threatened all my witnesses. You can actually see Vane Frazier, the man who saved my life. You can see him on that first videotape that we're selling out there, free electricity. He will testify at the, uh, what happened at the raid. They came to him and told him if he came to court, they would kill him. They would kill his wife. The sheriff told him, we'll kill your wife. Here's where your three sons live. Here's all their addresses. They'll all be dead before you get off the witness stand. We'll wait a while because you'll be too visible, and then we'll kill you. He ran to Germany. He went out of the whole country. All my experts did, leaving me stuck behind. I've never had a degree in physics in my life. I never had a physics course in my life. And here I was trying to defend all of this stuff. You know what? A year later, God kept me in jail for a year, holding them off. I, if they spit in front of me, we went to court. So for a whole year, I just kept bringing them to court, bringing them to court. And a year later, the guy came back thinking that I was already in prison. They were going to lock me up for 40 years. I, had no, I didn't even have any witnesses. And then I brought a charge against them for misconduct and had the sheriff on the, on the witness stand that day, a year later. And Vane Frazier, you'll see him in that tape, he came back to California. He said to his son, he says, son, I'm so ashamed of myself. This man is in prison for life now, and I could have saved him. And I could have, even more importantly, I could have stood up for the truth. And his son said, I hope you mean what you're saying, Dad, because they haven't got him at trial yet. He's been holding him off. And he's got the sheriff that threatened you and Mom on the witness stand. He says, and he says so if you really mean that, why don't you go down there? Took his hat off, threw it on the floor, and drove right down to the courthouse. Came into the courthouse that day. And he said, if that man over there in shackles is... Is, is guilty of anything. I'm more guilty than him. I built the machine. He was my chief research scientist. I built the machine you're talking about. And the guy on the witness stand said he would kill me if I came to court. You want to shoot me? Here, sir, take me out back and shoot me. I'm tired of running from you. We got him on the stand. Thirteen witnesses came forward and get the book, the green book. It's the whole story. There. All, the, all the evidence. You'll see all the affidavits, everything. Thirteen witnesses came forward and then we actually proved to the judge in a court of law we could make electricity for free. And the minute we did that, the judge brought the hammer down and he said, I've heard enough. In the chambers now. So we all went in chambers and yes, Mr. Lee, you can come in too. And we all went into chambers and he said, the prosecutor's going to dismiss uh, the criminal case against you and you're free to go today. Prosecutor started to say something. He says, you don't need to say nothing. It's over, Mr. Lee. Uh, you're free to go. And I was dismissed. Now that somehow became something negative about me. But I proved in a court of law I could make electricity in 1990. Do you know that not one newspaper in the United States of America ever did that story, including the county I was arrested in? They didn't even do it on page 93. No story at all. Popular science didn't want it. Mechanics Illustrated didn't want it. Life didn't want it. Time didn't want it. CBS, ABC, NBC didn't want it. Nobody. Larry King would not let me on his show. Got so tired of people asking him. He could, we've got his voice coming on saying, we're not going to do that Dennis Lee character on the Larry King show. Stop asking us. Because they gave a $10,000 cash reward to anybody who could get me on Oprah or any of those shows. None of them would do it. It was... In 1990, I proved that I could make free electricity in a court of law, and 40 years worth of criminal charges against me were dismissed, and nobody even knows it. Unless you read my book, nobody knew it. So see, we know what they can do if it's just one or two of us or a small group of us, 
That's why fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. It took me 16 years to put this back together again, and I crawled through ashes to do it. And if you noticed, I don't have another 16 years to do this again because I'm going to be too old and I want somebody else to take this over before then. Okay, and so, hey guys, this is it. This is our one chance. I have fought my tail off to be back here to give you this opportunity. Now together we will either save our country or people say that the people get the government they deserve. So I guess we deserve it. Yeah, thank you. Alrighty, so there we go, we got some, I think that's all right, yeah. Um, I'm, my name is Dennis Lee, I am the Director of Marketing for Better World Alternatives and a few other companies. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to the Chairman of the Board of our company, Heavenly Father, I, we're assembled here today, and we're assembled here to, to do something in your name, Lord, and this is your business. We're working in your field. And our president, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the, chair, the uh, uh, secretary treasurer, the Holy Spirit, we pray that you would all be present here tonight. Many of these people already know you, but I just wanted to introduce you to them so they knew where this was really coming from. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Uh, we're going to have some fun tonight. We are. And I think you're going to see some really, really, really amazing things. Um, I'm going to start off here telling you about something that's kind of interesting, kind of amazing. And uh, I'll just read it for you real quick. It says, isn't this amazing? Here's the taxes that you pay. Now, some people start a seminar, they'll tell you a joke. But there's no joke about this. <laughs> this is the taxes that we're all paying right now. And at least I get you awake anyway. Uh, accounts receivable tax, building permit tax, capital gains tax, CDI, license tax, cigarette tax, corporate income tax, court fines and indirect form of taxes, dog license tax, federal income tax, federal unemployment tax, FUDA, fishing license tax, food license tax, fuel permit tax, gasoline tax, hunting license tax, inheritance tax, interest expense, which is tax on top of the money, inventory tax, IRS interest charges, which is tax on top of taxes, IRS penalties, which is taxes on top of taxes on top of taxes, liquor tax, local income tax, luxury taxes, marriage license tax, Medicare tax, property tax, real estate tax, septic permit tax, service charge taxes, social security tax, road usage taxes, State taxes, recreational vehicle tax, road toll booth taxes, school tax, state income tax, state unemployment tax, which is SUDA, telephone federal excise tax, telephone federal universal service fee tax, telephone federal state and local surcharge tax, telephone minimum usage surcharge tax, telephone recruiting and non-recruiting charges tax, telephone state and local tax, telephone usage charge tax, toll bridge taxes, toll tunnel taxes, traffic fines, another indirect form of taxation, trailer registration tax, utility taxes, vehicle license registration tax, vehicle sales tax, watercraft registration tax, well permit tax, workers' compensation tax, and hotel room taxes. And they're really high. I know that on the road here. I have to make a comment about this, and that is that only one of those taxes existed 100 years ago, and that was sales tax. That's it. And our nation at that time was the most prosperous nation in the world, and it had absolutely no national debt. It had the largest middle class in the world, and mom stayed home and raised the kids. What happened? Now we're getting close to $8 trillion worth of... Uh, National debt. Kind of interesting, isn't it? Well, I want you to understand tonight that um, hopefully you have come into another dimension. This is another dimension. Now, uh, it, not that old show, what was it, Twilight Zone or Toilet Zone or whatever you call that. But this is a whole other dimension here tonight. Hopefully tonight you're going to know something that you didn't know because see our problem in America is we don't know what we don't know and we don't know that we don't know it. 
That's our problem. And the Bible says the truth will set you free. So we're going to tonight try to open your reality a little bit and show you why they call you the consumer. Do you know why you're called the consumer? Because you're the one getting caught. That's why you're the consumer. Now, we're going to show you some very unique technologies that we have out on the market. And I've got two goals, actually three goals tonight. My first goal is I'm going to want to try to make you a customer. I'm going to show you things one right after the other. And I'll bet you anything you want to bet me that I can show you at least one thing that you say, man, you know something, I'd like to have one of those. Maybe even that lotion that we started out just showing you so that we would spare the time in this. But we're going to show you some products tonight. And our goal would be for you to say, you know something, I'd, I'd, like, to, I'd like to have that alternative. Every one of these products are alternatives to products that already exist. Because most of the technologies that we receive today are not the best that they can, that they can give us. They're what they're willing to give us because they've been suppressing all the better stuff. Now, the reason for that always comes down to the same thing. It's all about money. It's all about money. But see, we want to bring the world an alternative, a better world alternative. That's why we're called better world alternatives. So we're going to show you some alternatives to that. Now, each of you got this sheet when you came in. It has two sides. One is about a DVD called The History of Free Electricity. What a ridiculous thing. Is there such a thing as free electricity? Well, sure there is. There's such a thing as free electricity, and your university knows about it. Everyone here, the university, wherever, whichever university is closest to you, you could go there and you could ask them, what's this guy talking about free electricity? Do you guys know about free electricity? And they'll tell you about solar, solar energy. By golly, it makes free energy when the sun's shining. They'll tell you about wind machines. How many people know that when a wind machine is blowing because the wind's blowing on it, that's free electricity. It is free. It doesn't cost you anything to run that wind machine. It doesn't cost you anything to run that solar system, that high-tech thing, boiling water in a tin can on a roof. Man, I mean, that's high-tech, folks or even photovoltaics, kind of like replicating what happens when you put your toes on sand. And then they'll tell you about the third way that they know to make free electricity. They know three of them. Hydroelectricity. If you happen to have water heading somewhere as it flows downhill, you can put it across a little turbine and you can produce electricity for free. So they'll tell you about the three ways they know to make free electricity. But if you get this series of tapes right here. On the second tape, you'll see seven ways to make free electricity and not one of them or any of those three we just mentioned. Not one of them. But see, instead of having solar energy that works when the sun's shining or wind energy that works when the wind's blowing, is the sun shining all the time? Is the wind blowing all the time? Yeah, water's continuing to go down toward the ocean, but not everywhere, only wherever it goes. So you can only get that energy under those conditions. I know seven ways to make free electricity, and every one of them work 24 hours a day, 365 days and nights a year, anywhere on this whole entire planet, from the Antarctica to the Arctic. All the time, 24 hours a day and night. Now you might ask yourself, why doesn't your university know that? Or you might just say, why does this crazy man think he knows that? Either way, <laughs> I'm going to try tonight to inspire you. Tonight I'm going to try to get you to where you want to look into the things I'm talking about. Now tonight we don't have enough time because they said I can't stay for breakfast. If I could, I'd like to take all the time up to breakfast time, but I know you guys don't want to stay that long. So tonight what I'm going to try to do is give you an appetizer plate. Appetizer, not the whole meal. I'm going to try to get you interested where you say, you know something, we ought to look into this. Because all the information is available on our website. 
All the information is available in a sales training kit. Now that's the second thing I'm going to try to do tonight. I'm going to try to take some of you fine people tonight and turn you into salespeople for us. I'm hoping to inspire you to want to distribute some of these products for us so that we can get you your activity and all of your friends can get involved in this. Now, is there anyone here in the room that's making less than $100,000 a year? We got anybody like that? Anybody? I mean, if you have 10 friends and 10 relatives, then I know that I could show you tonight that you could retire within the next one to two years. Because if you're making less than $100,000 a year, I'm going to show you tonight how to make $100,000 a year every year for the rest of your life on the work you do now, assuming you have 10 friends. So if you've got 10 friends or relatives, you could actually set up that kind of income tonight. Now, that's crazy. But I'm going to try to live up to that and show you that that's entirely possible tonight. See, you might say you're at the right place at the right time. Now, somebody would say, well, wait a minute. Is this one of those multi-level marketing programs? Because some people don't like those. And I'm going to tell you no. This is not one of those multi-level marketing programs. If you want to get involved in buying any of the products that I show you tonight, you can. If you want to get involved in selling any of the products I show you tonight, you can. Now, let's start out first by giving you the rules. You can get a 15% commission distributing any of the products that you see here tonight. Some of them are big ticket items. Talking about sales as much as a quarter of a million dollars for one sale. What's 15% of a quarter of a million dollars? It's a bunch of money. Or some of them are little bitty products, cost $15. Well, you wouldn't make much, 15% of that's not much, but you could sell a lot of those. So it's up to you if you want to do this. You can do it full time, you can do it part time, you can do it none of the time, you can do it once or twice or three times or five times. Okay, or you can just buy products, but that's my goal. Now, also on this sheet of paper, this is my brag sheet. Because on the front end, it talks about free electricity. You can get that DVD outside. It's 10 bucks, And it'll show you the history of free electricity, our free electricity. But on the other side, you've got research projects nearing completion. Now, that tape, that DVD tape, research projects, these are written in small ink to get them on the page. Small print. But let me tell you something. There's more information here than there is in the Department of Energy and you've got to ask yourself this question, in the last 20 years, this is 10% of what I've been doing. Would you please compare this to what the Department of Energy has been doing for the last 10 years? I would love to be compared to them for the simple reason they haven't been doing much. Now, they have billions of dollars every year to do it on, and I only have a few, had a few million when I started. I'm going to read a couple of highlights on this just to get you encouraged that you ought to get that tape. And by the way, if you don't like it, I'll buy it back from you, whatever you paid for it, any time. Superconductivity at room temperature. We actually did that. Do you know there was a guy who did superconductivity at 200 degrees below zero and he got a Nobel Prize? I did it in Omaha, Nebraska a few years ago at room temperature. Didn't get any Nobel Prize or anything. Got harassed, didn't get any prizes though. Tesla coil concept. Did you know that a technology exists that can send live electricity through the air any distance at all with no wires? If you doubt that, get that DVD because you'll learn that and see that and even understand the concept of it. It was developed by a man named Nikola Tesla. We can send live electricity with no wires at all. Uh, V8 Chrysler engine, you can see it run, closed loop, means no exhaust at all, on carbon dioxide, just sitting there running on CO2. Also, you can see a laser camera, a medical laser camera. This camera looks right into the human body. And we could be sitting here with this camera looking at this gentleman's heartbeat right on the monitor, television monitor right now, right through his clothes and everything. Dial it up and look inside of his veins and see if there are any occlusions. 
I could have a six foot concrete wall between me and you right now and be taking all y'all's picture right now and you could be making faces at a television monitor through six feet of solid concrete. I don't know, the Department of Energy got anything like this? I'm not aware of it. We got paint that transfers heat. You paint your driveway, then you walk out in the morning when it snows, get yourself a nice cup of coffee or cocoa and sit back, flip a button and watch your, your uh, driveway defrost while your neighbor's out there with a shovel. Explosive proof mesh, we can line any tank, any gas tank, even airplane tanks, and you can shoot at them all day long and you can't blow them up. You can light rags in them and let them burn out and they'll just go out. Full of, full of gas or half full of gas or 10% gas, doesn't matter. Plastic houses that can be built by two people. You can build a, a two-bedroom home in three days, two people, and they go together like a Lego set. And you got to get a color you like because they last 2,000 years. You never have to repaint them and you never have to re-roof them. The roof is good for the whole 2,000 years. No negative, negative impact from the ultraviolet light. And a tornado can sit on top of it and twist the night away and it ain't going nowhere. Biomass converter to run the engine in the car you're driving right now on corn, bird seed, or McDonald's french fries. A tornado engine, speaking of tornadoes, that creates 5,000 horsepower and the engine weighs 174 pounds and is smaller than the one you got under your hood right now. 5,000 horsepower and it runs on water vapors. That's the fuel. You see all this in that tape I'm talking about, that DVD. A personal helicopter, anybody here drive helicopters? A personal helicopter that anybody can get in, even me, and you pull back on it and it goes up and you push down on it and it goes down and you go left, it goes left, you go right, it goes right. Anybody can get in it and drive it immediately. A personal helicopter, anybody can fly. Not very costly either. It's just one passenger, but it's a lot of fun. And like I said, seven ways to make free electricity. It'll also talk about anti-gravity. If anybody here doesn't understand that you can have anti-gravity. A uh, propulsion device that can put your car in space using the engine in it in your driveway. A Pentecost computer, I speak into it in English, and it translates immediately into any language in the world. So whatever language, known language in the world, you'll be hearing it in that language. Bring fresh water anywhere in the world, any amount, absolutely free. Dematerialize and rematerialize matter over a telephone line as far as the line goes. I can take my coffee cup in New York and send it over the telephone line to California. That technology, all the things I'm saying, and way, 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 way more, already exist. How are we doing? If what I just said is right, do you think anybody's keeping any knowledge from you and me? Well, it is. And what have the other people done, the big businesses done, and the government done for the last 20 years? Nothing but harass me and try to keep me from bringing these technologies to you. That's all they've done. Well, that's all right, because we're going to bring them anyway, because how many people know that God is bigger than the government? And God is bigger than big business. And when we go with him, we don't worry about any of the rest of this stuff. We don't sweat the small stuff, so to speak. Now I'm going to get into some technologies. I cannot show you everything tonight, but I'm going to show you our product line. The things I'm showing you now are available. You can buy them. We can do this. We can modify these things. Now in the first place, we're going to get into this engine over here. Now this engine right here is just like the infernal combustion engine in your car. So if you've got an engine in your car, there's no difference between that engine and that engine right there. We didn't do anything to it, took it right out of the box. How many people heard about the 100 mile an hour carburetor? Every time I talk about this stuff, somebody tells me, well, there's a guy one time had a 100 mile carburetor and he either got killed or bought off or something, but he doesn't, he's not out there anymore. Hear that story? Talk about an urban legend. And you know what that carburetor's called? It's called the Pogue carburetor, P-O-G-U-E, if you want to look it up on the internet, P-O-G-U-E, the Pogue carburetor. And it's real. It does exist. It was real. 
And what the Pogue carburetor does is it vaporizes your fuel as your fuel goes into your engine. That's what it does. Now, when you vaporize the fuel going into your engine, you're going to get a whole lot different performance out of it than you do whenever you don't vaporize it. You can go to Modern Marvels on the History Channel, a program called Gasoline, and you can actually see right there them talking about the most important thing on your engine is vaporizing your fuel. Now, it's interesting because the guys who manufacture the gas say you need to vaporize your fuel. The guys who build the engine say you need to vaporize your fuel. And then they put a computer in your car. And you know what that computer does? Makes doggone sure no vapors ever hit your engine. That's what it does. Now, you wonder, why would they do that? Well, they say if you don't vaporize your fuel, you get a misfire and you get poor gas mileage. Now, you know the guy that's selling you your gas wants you to get great gas mileage. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the real world. Now, we actually take your engine and modify it. Engine modifications. This is a modified engine right here. I own six vehicles that are modified to this technology. We got about 150 mechanics trained to modify engines to this technology. And as soon as this tour is over, we're opening the school again and we're going to start modifying engines. What will it cost you to modify your engine? About $1,500 will modify your engine. Well, what will that do for me? Get you up to four times the mileage you got now. Anybody in this room wouldn't pay $1,500 to get four times your gas mileage? Wouldn't? Yeah, <laughs> you would. Okay. Well, I'm sure you're not the only one, too. <laughs> now, all we do is make sure that fuel is vaporized when it goes into the engine. We do it by taking the exhaust from the engine, having the hot exhaust come out, and the fuel come past that hot exhaust. There are five things that this little reactor rod does to your fuel. I don't have time to teach them to you. Go to the internet, get the information, and if you're technical, you learn all about it. And at the end of that, you're going to be saying, he's right, he's right. I know you are. That's why I say go. But one of the things that happens is we vaporize the fuel. I can't tell you all about it, but actually, whatever your fuel is, we also separate all of the compounds in your gasoline or in your fuel into elements. So when they sit, they come up here, they're fully vaporized, but they're ready to go in your engine. They're not compounds, they're elements. Now, elements burn so clean that you never, ever, ever have to change the oil in that car again. Forget oil changes. I'm sorry, you probably enjoy doing that. But it's all right if, you're, if your engine man manufacturer says you've got to change your oil every 3,000 miles, get under there, put it in a pan, Close it back up and just pour it back in the top again every 3,000 miles. You'll change it. But you never have to change it again as long as the engine runs. I've never changed the engine. The, 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 I've never changed this one. And we ran this one across America in the year 2000. So six years we've been doing this. Now, we're going to just stop talking about it and run it for you. One of the crazy things we're going to show you with this engine, then we're going to get even crazier over here, as we're going to show you, you can use just about anything for fuel. You can use pickle juice. Anybody here using pickle juice now? Pickle juice for fuel? That's exactly right. You can use Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola, and the Coke guys love this. I'm surprised they haven't got a pump out there for that. You can use anything at all that is liquid. Now, I'm going to try to make that point to you here. So you can use anything that's liquid, but you can also use 80% water 20% gas. Now, if you used 80% water, 20% gas, what would that do to your gas mileage? That'd be four times right there. Now, I can actually modify it, get you four times on your gas mileage, and then you can use half gas and half, and, and half water. What would that do to that? It'd give you eight times gas mileage. Okay, now, so it's going to be kind of interesting because we're going to go ahead and do something for you. We're going to show you that you can use anything in here, even 80% water, 20% gasoline. Now, let's just start out getting crazy here. Here's some Pepsi. Anybody drink this stuff? Any Pepsi drinkers? 
first hand up. Kate, go ahead and take a drink of that. Open him up and drink him real quick here. All right, open it, yeah. Check it out. All right, now I'm not going to ask you if that's the real thing because that's Pepsi, that's not Coke, but. Okay, Pepsi? All right, that's Pepsi. Now you're in luck, brother, because we'll just pour some of that in and then Ricky will take that to you. And I think it's the law. If you use Pepsi, you've got to use Coca-Cola. I think that's the law. But anybody drink this stuff, Coca-Cola? All right, we've got to drink it right here. Okay, go ahead and just, now tell me if that's a real thing. That's the real thing? Yep. All right, that's the real thing. Let's put some Coke and some Pepsi in there. Now, next thing we're going to use is Frappuccino. Anybody here drink Frappuccino? Got a Frappuccino drinker all the way in the inside there. Tell you what, I'm going to loosen that. Just go ahead and pass it down to him. Let him try that real quick. Let's keep moving here, though. Take a little chug of that real quick and verify it. Pass him back to me. And then we'll get him back to you. Don't worry. See, it's good. sometimes it's good to have a quick hand, a quick response. Now, the next thing we're going to use here, crude oil. Anybody drink this stuff? Crude oil. <laughs> no. No takers here, huh? <laughs> Thought we might have somebody from the Middle East or something that's just dedicated here. <laughs> All right, now we're just going to take some gunky old black yicky oil. You see that? We're going to dump that in there. Now, what would happen if you put that in your gas in your engine? Anybody know? Smoke like crazy, right? I mean, you look like a flat machine going down the road. Now, this is the exhaust here. We're going to exhaust it right in the room, and you're not going to see any oil coming out of this at all. Now, we'll also put some pickle juice in here. Oh, man. Pickle juice. Dill pickle juice. See, even I, oh, you even got a dill pickle in there. <laughs> Barbecue sauce. Oh, man, that's the real deal there. Let's clump some barbecue sauce up in there. Make us a nice fuel. Look at that barbecue sauce. Kikoman soy sauce. So it'll work in Japan just as well as it will in America. It's nice to know. So the Oriental people, soy sauce. Oriental people, we can do it there as well. And you know, the kids love ketchup here. This is not Heinz, by the way. Okay, so we've got us some ketchup there. Get a good order of ketchup going. Some A1 steak sauce. I'll get the steak later. All right. Don't let me forget that, Ricky. We're going to go get a steak later. <laughs> and some Red Hot, original Red Hot hot sauce. Oh, yeah, that's it. Hey, that's the stuff right there. Red Hot. Now, I know that thing's going to run. I'm not going to do that BAM thing that Emerald does all the time, but... Whoop. Ooh. Now, while this is running, I'm going to put my face down in here, and you're not going to see me tearing, and you're not going to hear me coughing, but I'm going to be breathing all the fumes that are coming out of this to show you that there's no pollution here at all. So if I'm going to have my face down here, I want something that smells good on this thing, okay? This engine can have bad breath here. Put some Listerine in that guy. And just to make sure, I'm going to throw in a little bit of Menin Skin Bracer. Aftershave. That'll work. I want that to smell good if my nose is going to be down there. Now, has anyone in here ever put sugar in somebody else's gas tank? I know you didn't put it in your own gas tank. Why? What will happen if you put sugar in a gas tank? Does anybody know? That's sugar. It'll freeze it up right now, and you can throw that engine away. Let's make sure we get plenty of sugar in there. 
Now, I told you guys that I can run this on water and gas. So I'm next going to put in as my last ingredient a little bit of water. So we're going to put some water in here. Now, this is kind of unique water. This is Ricky water. That's Ricky right there. As a matter of fact, I'm going to let Ricky put that in. That's not Mayan. That's... <laughs> hey, it's nice to know wherever you run out of gas, you can always get home. <laughs> now, wouldn't you say that we have just mixed up about the weirdest thing you could ever imagine you're going to run an engine on? What do you think? And we're going to see if we can start this engine and we can go with this engine here. There's a little bit of gasoline in the bottom, yes. I usually talk about that, but a little bit of it. You've got to have some hydrocarbon. All right, now let's go ahead and start him up. Okay, now it's running. Running pretty good. It's not hot. This is not hot because all the heat is going back into the engine. And if we look, there's no, there's no pollution here. No pollution. You can't do that on your engine. It'll be black. If I can get down here, no problem. Breathe it. I'm not crying. I'm not coughing. No problem at all. No problem. Now, shut it down, Ricky. We'll run it a short time, and then what we'll do is we're going to run it on a little bit of gasoline and water. We got about 20% gasoline and 80% water. So you see that portion, I'll drink this, this is water. Oh, this ain't that thing you used for your sample. He'd never do that to me. Not on the road, he knows I'd get even. All right, pour the water in with the gas. Take it and put it in here. Now you got the little Brillo pad in there to mix it up to keep it mixed. So that comes in and aerates it and mixes it up while it's running. I'll let you tighten that up. You got to get a good seal on it. All right. Not hot. No pollution. No black, no pollution. And once again, I can breathe it. No problem. It's rolling. No problem. Can that? No problem. Not hot. Smell it. Sit down, Ricky. Now, the real test of this whole thing is that I can modify your car engine for 1500 bucks, and then you can be doing what I'm doing in my car engines right now. But let me tell you something else that's way more interesting than that. Because this right here, all master mechanics will tell you what, what I'm about to do is impossible. All thermodynamicists will tell you this is impossible. Until they come and talk to me and they see that I'm doing it, or if you get our videos and we explain it in there, I'm sorry I can't take the time to do that tonight, but we fully explain it to you. And then once you do that, you see them doing this. Because we're not defying any of the laws of physics. Now, this right here is the exhaust in our engine. When I turn this on, I'll put the rag up here and it'll be doing this, because there is exhaust coming out of this engine. So it'll be doing like that. No exhaust here, no exhaust here, no exhaust here. 
And this is not exhaust. This will be sucking this rag in. This is air intake because you've got to have air to make the burn. So you've got to have air intake in here. Now this is kind of interesting because this is a ball valve. When I turn this ball valve this way, I shut that off. That means that if I put the rag up here, it'll be doing this. There's no gas there at all. It will not be coming out. No exhaust whatsoever. There will be no exhaust here, no exhaust here, and once again, it'll suck the rag in here. Now, if you take a potato and stick it on a tailpipe of somebody's car, what happens? It won't run. You're done. Banana, potato. Well, I'm doing the same thing when I shut this ball valve off. I'm shutting off the exhaust. Now, I'm going to start it with it open so I can start it. But once I get it started, it'd be the equivalent of sticking a potato in that tailpipe then. Not going to work. Now, I don't have time to explain to you exactly how this is happening, but I will give you a couple of hints. But I want to tell you the main, the main points from your perspective as a consumer. And by the way, we're the anti-con for consumers. We're here to give you the truth. Now, in this guy right here, and by the way, General Motors knows this. All the engine manufacturers know this. All the people who sell gasoline know this. That's the reason why they put a computer on your car. That's the reason why they say you can't touch the exhaust on the engine, because then they've legislated that to try to keep us from doing this. Uh, but it isn't going to work, and it didn't work, and we already know how to do it, and we could even use your exhaust manifold. We don't need to get inside the exhaust, so we can get the heat. That's all we really need is the heat. Now, so I want to just tell you the most important part. When you buy a dollar's worth of gasoline, ask any mechanic, if you're really, 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 really lucky, how efficient is your engine? About 18%. Am I right? About 18%. That's how efficient your engine is. 18%. Now, what does that mean? That means when you buy a dollar's worth of gas, 18 cents worth of it is getting you down the road. Where's the rest of it going? Right out your exhaust pipe and heat losses. So you're losing it out of the engine. Now, when you buy a dollar's worth of gas, you're getting 18 cents worth of travel. This is the good neighbor plan. You're giving your neighbor more of the gas that you're buying than you're using for yourself. Do they appreciate it? When's the last time your neighbor said, hey, thanks for all that gas fumes you've been sending my way? They don't appreciate it. So I say they're not going to appreciate it anyway. Why not shut it off? Now, if I shut it off, that 82 cents isn't coming out anymore. Where's it going? It's going right back into your gas tank, mixing with fresh gas. So the unburned gas and the fresh gas are coming up as um, molecules coming through this separation process, coming back into the engine as elements, mixing with air, and reburning until what? Until 100% of the gas you are buying is burned. All of it is burned. Now, which would be more gooder, 18 cents or a dollar? You'd rather burn a dollar, I'm sure. Now, if you're wondering how that happens because you're technical and you're like, wow, how could you do that? Because you'd be saying, wait a minute, you'd blow the gas tank up. You'd have all that back pressure. Got to have a high side. That's the explosion. Got to have a low side where you can throw the gas or throw the unburned gas too so that you can get rid of it because you've got to have a high and low side. Well, if you can't send it to the environment, where is the low side? I'll give you one hint and then get the videotapes and see all of it and understand all of it. Get the sales training program because I can't get you to sell these unless you understand it. And you'll see all the answers in that. Take it to any college professor and he'll say, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, he's not defining the laws of physics. But the hint is the intake of all engines is a... Vacuum. Anybody know that? There you go. That's a pretty good low side. It's less than zero. Anyway, I'm not going to talk anymore about it. We just got to run it because we've got a lot of things to show you tonight. And I want to show you how to make money. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay, we'll turn it on. It's running. 
Got it on a lawnmower so it can throw grass. There's the exhaust. See the exhaust? That's exhaust. No exhaust here. No exhaust through here. No exhaust here. And this is intake. It's sucking the rag in. Now we're going to go ahead and shut it off. Close it. Did it shut off? Isn't it still running? And you notice there's no exhaust. No exhaust here, no exhaust here. Try to suck the rag in. Now by the way, this is impossible. You can't do this, this is impossible. No exhaust, none at all. How much pollution would there be? None. How do I shut it off? I break the vacuum on the low side. Watch what happens when I break the vacuum. When I break the vacuum, it stops. Can't feed into a vacuum if there's no vacuum there. All right, now, go ahead. How much pollution would there be in that? Wouldn't somebody think that the EPA would want to hear about this? You know who the EPA is? The Environmental Pollution Authority? See, those guys would not even allow us to bring this engine into their office. We went to their office. They wouldn't allow us to have it in. They said, no engines in the building. So we said, okay, you can come outside and see it. And they wouldn't even come outside their building to the parking lot to see this. And I said, well, we'll do it on our side of the glass window, and you can look through the windows and see it. And they wouldn't do that either. They said, no, we're not allowed to endorse any product. Isn't this interesting? But you've got to understand something. When we end pollution, don't we end the EPA? And so that's a little bit too much uh, uh, non-pollution for them. What to you is an acceptable level of pollution? For me, it's zero. But we can modify the engines to run with no pollution at all. Tonight I'm going to show you we can end all fossil fuels for any purpose at all. We don't need fossil fuels at all. That is a lie. The fact that you're buying fossil fuels for any purpose at all is a big fat lie. You don't need it. Now let me show you some other stuff. This right here, Ricky, am I set here? Can you pull this out? Appreciate it, buddy. You're bigger than me, and I just ain't quite got the beef for it. Oh, yeah, I got it. Okay, now, this right here, that's good. This right here is an electric motor. This right here is an electric motor. Now, this is a one-horsepower AC electric motor. I pick it up, and you notice it's running, right? Am I right? It's running? Now, the interesting thing about this motor is that the wires are cut. So how does the motor run if the wires are cut? Where would the energy input be? How many people know if you're going to get energy out of a mechanical device, you have to have energy coming into a mechanical device to do that? It's the laws of physics. So this can't be right, that this is running with no power source. There has to be an energy source, so let's look for it. There it is right there. It's a 9-volt flashlight battery. Now, does anybody here know that you can't run a 1-horsepower AC motor on a 9-volt flashlight battery? Any technical people here should know that. But see, it's running, isn't it? And watch what happens when I disconnect one terminal from the battery. It stops. And then when I reconnect them, what does it do? It takes off running again. Well, you know why? Because if you build motors right and you wind them properly, you can run a one horsepower AC motor on a nine volt flashlight battery. That's if you wind them properly. Anybody hear about garbage in, garbage out on computers? It works the same way with universities. If you're gonna teach people to wind them wrong and tell them that's the right way to wind them, no one's gonna get this. 
But see, all we do is just rewind the motor and we can rewind it right. Now, why do you think people deliberately wind motors improperly? Why do you think they would do that? The reason for that is they want it to use more electricity than it actually needs to get the job done. Who's that good for? Electric company. Now, this is a well-known good old boy routine. It's called, you lie and I'll swear to it. So, the electric utility company, somebody said, well, is that a conspiracy? I can't, I'll never get used to the fact that I know Christians in this country who are wondering if there's a conspiracy in this country or not. You got a devil and demons and you got the good guys and the angels and you're wondering if there's a conspiracy. Well, let me put your mind to rest right now. Yes, indeed, there's a conspiracy and they're conspiring to cheat you, the consumer. Is there fraud going on? Yes, there is a fraud. So if you came here tonight to see a fraud, I, got to, I don't want to disappoint you. I'm going to show you a fraud. The fraud is General Electric, Westinghouse, Dayton Motors, all the people winding motors are deliberately defrauding and cheating the American people. Isn't that amazing I'm standing here saying that? I've done it for about 15 years now on national tours. I've never been sued by General Electric. Isn't that interesting? You know why I was never sued? They don't want me to prove this in a court of law. So let's let me go turn people on and tell some people about it. We developed this technology. It's called the power controller. Power controller. Wouldn't it be cool if we could make one of these for Washington, D.C.? Power controller. What we can do is we can plug this in, unplug your motor that's deliberately built to run wrong, plug our power controller in and correct it and make it run right. It won't be wasting any electricity. Has anybody here ever touched an electric motor that was running for a long period of time and it was not hot? And it wasn't hot. No, you know how many times I've gotten an answer to that nationwide? Never. No one has ever said, yes, I've been running motors for long periods of time and they're not hot. If you have ever touched an electric motor and it's hot, you have been defrauded. <coughs> now, how do you know if I'm telling you the truth or not? Well, I'm going to take this little power controller. We sell these to people. They plug them in and they plug to them into the wall and they plug the motor into this and it never, ever, ever runs hot again. It's a little concept I call fraudulous interruptus. Now I'm going to just do this for you real quick. We'll turn this on. Got a flag blowing. Certain amount of RPMs going on. And if you look at the meters, we got 110 volts, about 6 amps, 360 watts. You see that? So right now you're paying for 360 watts and you're getting this flag blown. They're putting more energy in than they need to do the job, so the motor will get hot. You know why? You know why the motor gets hot? Because it has excess power, energy that's not created or destroyed. It has to get rid of, and it can only do it through the second law of thermodynamic. Hot goes to cold. So that's why your motor gets hot. But see, if I take fraudulent interrupt this, and I plug this into the wall, it has a little computer inside. And then I plug your motor into the power controller. Little red light is on. Now, it'll let it have all the power it wants. So the meter will go back to 6, back to 360, stay at 110. And then when that little light turns green, look and see what happens when the light turns green. Now, you won't be able to see that color on there. But see it yourself here live. When the light turns green, you're going to see, it says, aha, you guys got more power than you need. And it starts shaving it down. The voltage will go down, the amperage will go down, and the watts will go down to what you really are using. And your motor will never get hot. It means your motor is going to last three times as long. Did you know that? Also means you don't have to pay for all that extra energy that you're not using. See, it goes back up to six. It's still red. 360. Now just turn green. See what it's doing? The flag's still blowing exactly like it was, same RPM that you had before, same energy, 
But now instead of doing six, you're doing about four amps. And instead of using 360 watts, you're using about 240 watts. Which one's more gooder, 240 or 360? And your motor will never, ever, ever get hot. See, that's how you know I'm lying. If your motor gets hot, then you can call me and you can, you can tell everybody I'm a fraud and you can get attorney generals to come down and harass me or do whatever you want to do because I'll be lying to you. But see, it's real easy to see who the fraud is. Now, this right here is just an outright fraud from your electric utility company. These boys, every business person in America should be in open revolt. It's amazing we're so disorganized that we don't do anything like that, but we should be. Now, I'm going to take my little amp probe, turn him on, so it can be, uh, hey Ricky, okay I'm good, I'm good. What are you going to do, you going to take it all the way out here again? All right. Now, this right here is the power coming from the electric company into an AC motor. How many people know AC motors have to resonate? They have to go from the power source to the motor, back to the power source. Power's flowing in both directions, back and forth. <clears throat> now, when the motor resonates with something, if the thing it's resonating is the same frequency of the motor, then you'll get a perfect power factor and you'll have perfect performance. If what it's resonating with is out of sync, then you'll be lucky to get 50% efficiency out of a 90% efficient motor because your power factor is off. It's not resonating with the right thing. The electric company puts a transformer on a pole outside of your building. All the motors in your factory are resonating with a transformer on a pole outside. And guess what? These are never in sync with any motor. Do you know why General Electric serves on the board of directors of every electric utility company in the United States? Make doggone sure these are never in sync with any motor. Do you understand the concept? Now, we can build a transformer like this one. It's called a tank circuit. Put it right up next to your motor and let your motor resonate with the transformer. They'll be the same frequency and boy, do you want to see the difference in power for you. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. The motor is running the generator, is lighting the lights. That's the load. I could take my watt meter, zero it out, and put it on this. This is the power coming from the electric company right now. This motor is resonating with a transformer somewhere outside right now. And we look and we see how many amps we're using. Do you have a good shot of that? 18 amps? Everybody sees that we're using 18 amps? Okay, now we're going to go ahead and shut it down and Ricky's going to hook it up to our circuit. Now, I couldn't have done this with this building because, I mean, I've got different situations everywhere I go. Now it's only going over 10 inches of line resonating with a tank circuit. That's the right frequency. Now we're going to turn it on. It's going to do the same work. This will run that, light the lights. Doing the same job. But now we're going to take a look and we're going to measure how many amps it's taking to do the job now that we're no longer resonating with their transformer. You see that? What we got? 6.8? Remember we had 18.1, now we got 6.8. Which one's more gooder? Which one would you rather pay for if you had an electric, if you had a big factory and you had all these big motors in it? Let me tell you something, folks. The electric utility company is going to tell you what size light bulbs to put in your factory, but they're not going to tell you anything about this because they're not making much money on the light bulbs. Let me tell you something. They're making millions millions of dollars with factories across America with this little con game right here. Well, like I said, tonight I'm here to tell you, to expose the con and tell you what's going on. Don't have a lot of time for questions. I'll try to take one quickie. Go.